Pizza, but I said, well, me and the frog will be just fine. Can frog. you just hold on one second? Yeah. Hi, welcome to B Movie Mania. My name is Paul Brooks, and I'm Mike Hayes. And tonight we're. Uh, Do you remember bringing it down a little bit? A little bit, uh, but in terms of uh, age range, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. This is this is a show for the kids. This is the kids show. A kids episode of, mm -hmm. of B Movie Mania. Yeah. We like, I, you know, there's a lot of kids' movies out there. And Love them. Yeah, fun. we, we like kids' movies. Fun. Ridiculous sometimes. Those yeah. plots are crazy. Yeah. Oh, I need a beer. You got a beer. It's empty. Oh. <sighs> Call well, Tim. kids don't have... Tim's out on the street right now getting okay. ready, I think. Okay. So I'll call him. All right. Or maybe it's JP. He's one of the well, street someone. men. Someone. Get one of the guys. You get the street, street guy. street man. Hey, I forgot beer. Can you, is there any way you can grab me? I f we're recording, but I forgot to get a beer. I can't really do the show without a beer. You can, gr can you grab that for me? Thank you. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Just like a, just like a highlight or whatever, I don't care. Okay, bye. Sorry about that. That's all right. Is he, gonna, so, is he pulling through? Yeah, he's nice. going to get me a beer. Well, um. Oh. Hey. Hey, yeah. special delivery. Hey, thank you, Tim. Yeah. All right. Well, you, you on the street tonight, or? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much every night, right? Yep. Well, good luck. Thanks. Thanks for the beer. See you later. Cheers. Oh. All right, well. Mike, Paul, uh, we watched uh, we watched a feature film mm -hmm. uh, that my mother. <laughs> I think I know. I think I know what you're gonna say. Okay, well, let me say it. All right. We watched a feature. I, I think I know what you're about to say. Let me say it. Sorry. No. We watched. I'm just a feature saying. I think I know what is going on. Would you shut up and let me say it? Okay. We watched a feature film tonight. Is it the Buttercream the... Gang? I wanted to say it. Sorry. I just I knew what you were going to say. God. It. Sorry. I wanted to say it. I didn't mean to be a, a real jerk. Just read the back. All right. Summer for 14-year-old Scott, Pete, Eldon, and Lanny. His name's Lanny. Lanny. I never read his name. I don't think they <laughs> quite... ever say his name. Yeah. All right. Summer for 14-year-old Scott, Pete, Eldon, and Lanny means having fun and helping those in need around town. The boys become known as the Buttercream Gang. A term coined during the early days of Elkridge when the local minister used asked boys to help widows churn their cream into butter. <laughs> <laughs> then Pete makes some new friends and forms a very different kind of gang. But Scott, Eldon, and Lanny won't give up on their friend, and they strive with help from their community to bring Pete back to his former values. Will they succeed? This is a moving story of love and devotion to friendship. That's mm -hmm. true. This is this yeah. is this is an inspiring film. It's got some, you know, some every almost every single background music, no matter what's going on in the movie, has got that inspiring like sound to it. All right, guys, step on it. <sighs> At the beginning of the film, mm -hmm. there are four. Members of the Buttercream Gang. Yes. And by the way, 
this and they mentioned this on the back of the box the gang goes way back this is oh, this yeah. is in this town being in the buttercream gang is um you know a, a very well established tradition mm -hmm, mm -hmm. among among the town's people yeah the whole town started calling those boys the buttercream gang <laughs> and we've had one ever since i was buttercreamer you know when i was your age the men. Yeah. The town. Yeah. Well, the there's no girls allowed. No girls allowed. As, as shown by the only picture on the back is just a picture of a sign saying no girls allowed. <laughs> like. <laughs> that's Margaret. Yeah, that's Margaret. She wears glasses. And she's a geek. Sorry, Margaret. I didn't see you there. You didn't see me. What am I, invisible? And I have to say, there was some very odd... Um, I, I don't know. I don't know quite know what to call it. Sexism. Like it wasn't quite misogyny. Like it's well, it was. If you go back and look at some of the stuff that they were saying to Margaret, it oh, was well, not no, I nice. I totally agree. I was under the guise of like, ooh, boys think girls are gross. But you're past that by fourteen, aren't you? Like that's like seven-year-old stuff. You should be. Hey, are you guys up there? Scott, are you there? <laughs> Margaret, don't move. How'd you know we were here? Stop kidding, Mother. I'll tell you when you can talk. These boys do a lot of good things in this film, but Certainly. the one thing that I would talk to them about, listen, you need to treat women, girls and women, with a little bit more respect. Mm -hmm. Because when you grow up, that's not going to fly anymore. Yeah. Well, don't, don't tell her that going out to the, to the dance with Margaret is worse than dog breath. That's something they do say. That's just not nice. I came to collect on that favor you owe me. You owe Margaret a favor? That's worse than dog breath. The favor is for you to take me to the dance. Tonight. Pick me up at 7 and don't be late. But, hey, pick her up at 7 and don't be late. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to the heart of the matter here. Yeah. This movie is really about the friendship of two boys. Mm-hmm. Um, Scott. Pete's my best friend in the world. I really missed him while I was gone. And Pete. And Pete. I'm a buttercreamer, right? Yeah, yeah, you know it. Besides, it's the closest I may ever get to having a real mom. Yeah. Now, Pete, at the beginning of the film, is the leader of the buttercream gang. Mm hmm Great leader, great kid. Real nice guy. You know, he, he, he basically says, you know, the buttercream gang, it's about helping people out. Mm hmm It's about having fun, too. He does say that. Don't get burned out on all the helping. Have some fun too. Right. All right, look at me. Buttercream isn't just about helping people out or whatever. It's about having fun. <laughs> you know? Right. You know about fun? Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Pete has to go help his aunt with some stuff in Chicago, so mm -hmm. he moves to Chicago and he makes Scott the leader of the Buttercream Gang. Mm -hmm. As my last final act as president, I would like to nominate Scott! to be president of the Buttercreamers. Well, why do you want to nominate me? All in favor say aye. 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 Pete moves to Chicago and things kind of take uh, a little bit of a turn for him. He gets in cahoots with some, some, uh, some rotten kids, let's say. Steve, come on. Come on guys, it's in funny. Where are you? What's going on? I tell you, that Chicago, it'll get you. Horrible place. Yeah, it turns turns anyone into a monster. Ugh. Look, I asked you to live with us because I thought you'd be a good example for my children. Now all they talk about is being in a gang like you. So he's, you know, he's not like even seemingly on purpose. Like Robin falls into, falls into this stuff. They start robbing, he starts following along, his grades plummet. He was a smart kid. It's a letter from your school. You've been expelled. It says you broke into another kid's locker. Uh, and then he eventually gets sort of like kicked out of... Chicago, his, his, the city of Chicago. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've talked to your grandfather and he thinks that the best thing for you would be to go back to Elk Ridge. 
his aunt kicks him out, sends yeah. him back to Utah, wherever, wherever it's supposed to be. It's filmed in Utah. Okay, really? Yeah, it... yeah. That's what they said at the end of the credits that it was filmed in okay. Utah. Okay, all right. He starts dressing like a cholo. Yep. <laughs> yep. Very stereotypically. Bandana, uh, bandana and khakis. Dress shirt, high collar, buttoned up top, and that's it. Just yeah. flowing with like a white undershirt. Oh. Hey guys, come on back. On time, no see. What happened to you? What? You mean the threads? Pretty cool, huh? You like them? Well, you look different. Yeah, things things are just not the same. He's not the same kid anymore. He's changed, as yeah. we we see in many emotional scenes where he's just serious, seriously just upset. Yeah. Sometimes I want so bad for things to be the way they were, but hey, they can't. Sure they can. No, they can't. It's like riding your bike someplace and getting lost. You try to go back and find out where you made the wrong turn, but. You don't know where you made the wrong turn, and every turn you make after that, you just get you more lost. So you stop and ask someone for directions. You know, I mean, I have to be, if on a serious note, mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that uh, as as a kid who grew up uh, watching a lot of Star Trek, I appreciate a lot of the uh, things that they were trying to teach kids in this. It wasn't sure. it wasn't preachy. No, it wasn't very heavy-handed. It was, hey, listen. Sometimes you're put in a in a difficult situation, and no matter how difficult it gets or how tough it might be for you, you need to do the right thing. It's a lot. It's a yeah. It's an, it's an, a very inspiring story to show kids that you know what you young man or woman don't need to be all tough and act secretive and bad. Right. You can help out. That's the widow right. Jenkins, if she falls down. Don't worry about the police. Which she she does. Widow Jenkins <laughs> falls down in her house, and somehow a girl no. How does she know? Scott! Scott! What? What's the matter? It's the Widow Jenkins! She fell down again! I tried to get in her house, but it was all locked up! Come on, guys, let's go. Apparently in this, in this small town, in, if there's a problem, Instead of calling the police or call your t telling your mom you or dad, three fourteen year olds, you call the buttercream gang and they come to the rescue and it's amazing. Uh. Whoa, oh, I'm slipping. Dark fire on Alden. Just that, that final scene yeah. where, where you know, Pete's gone back to Chicago. Pete just loses it yeah. at some point, okay? Pete just flips out. Mm -hmm. He trashes the grocery store. Oh, you remind me how good I used to be. I want you to try and stop me. That's it. I'm going to tear apart this whole store until you do stop me. You understand? Real you know, I'm so excited, Saved by the Bell kind of a scene. Yeah. Real intense. Uh, and he goes back to Chicago. Dear Pete, I heard that you're back in Chicago. Right. And then they, they end the movie with a, like, a, a, a scary scene of, like, the whole, all, his, all Scott's friends have come together, and they're like, we got a Pete, we got a Pete letter. Right. It's like, it almost looks like, not an intervention, but like we're going to come together to support Scott be hard. hard because this is going to be hard and, on him. And they've read the letter. They've opened his mail. Which is a which federal is a offense. Federal offense, yes. <laughs> What's going on? What happened? My jaw was hanging open. Really? Because I thought for sure that it was going to be... Bad news. Like Pete got stabbed in yeah. a, a thing or whatever. We're getting into some spoiler territory right, we here. We want to get but... into what that is. But it was a very intense scene. And yeah. We're just like, what is this? Uh, I enjoyed the film, Mike. Sure. That's let's, fun. Let's, let's talk about ratings. All right. What do you think? Paul, I'm going to give it a heart. A heart. And I'm pointing it at you. You got your two hands there? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's, I think that's, you know, this movie does have a lot of heart. Uh, I enjoyed it. 
I, I, I wish that I could write a blurb on the back of it that mm -hmm. said the buttercream gang soars. I gotta go two hands. <laughs> like just, a bird. I love just, you know, when I can give a movie two hands, I'm gonna do it right there. It's great. Thanks. I thought so too. Hey, before we get to our next review, let's just head out real quick to our man on the street, Tim, and see what's going on, you know, with people on the street and Tim. Tim? Hey, guys, what's going on? Uh, you know, I'm out here and uh, I, I, I've been out here for like an hour and a half. I can't get anyone to talk to me. So, uh, I don't know, this whole thing's just a mess. It's a difficult feeling to describe, but if you can imagine a gentle, tingly sort of tickle that starts in your stomach and spreads all over, that will give you some idea of what it's like. Oh. Hmm. Oh, hey, we're back. Welcome back. Oh, we were paying attention. Mm -hmm. I promise. So. Great job. That, yeah, Great thank, job. thank you for that update, that report. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to review another uh, uh, another film, mm -hmm. uh, and Mike, you're you're a big fan of this uh, franchise, I suppose. Well, no, I I don't know. They might have more, but I I years ago was at a yard sale and I found a book, and it's a book for kids, younger kids than the last movie, younger than Buttercream. Right. This is for you know educational. Right. And uh, well, I'm just going to show. Yeah, what why it don't is. you why don't you hold that book up? It's something called, Where Did I Come From? Oh my gosh. That's the book. Yes. And what we're going to be reviewing tonight on B-Movie Mania is Where Did I Come From? The movie, the motion picture. And it's not very long. It's, it's only uh, about 27 minutes. It's animated. It's an anim animated film. Mm-hmm. But boy, does it pack a punch. Yes. And we're not talking about the fruit kind. That's right. Um, Mike, tell us about the film. You want to read the back or should sure. I read the back? If, whatever. I mean, I read from the book a little bit. Why don't you read, read the, the back? back? Yeah. All right. Here's the deal, gang. Sex education can be fun. This animated video cassette, Where Did I Come From?, tells the story of conception through birth in a way that lets children, and sometimes their parents, learn while they laugh. Wait, what? That's what it says. In half an hour of full color animation, it answers all those awkward and unavoidable questions that have embarrassed mothers and fathers ever since kids and curiosity were invented. From the sperm race to the fertilization tango, from the comforts of womb service to the joys of the birthday, the facts of life are presented with the same love and humor that have made Where Did I Come From? a best-selling book all over the world. Every child in the world embarrasses him, his parents with the questions this tape answers in an informative, educational, and entertaining way. Okay. Well, this movie, um, you know, I wish that this film that I would have seen a film like this at some point, mm -hmm. you know, so that I didn't have to find out about it. Like with the sit-down. With, I didn't have a sit-down. No? No, I didn't have a sit-down. Oh. I, um, I come from a, a pretty repressed mm -hmm. Christian family, and, you know, I had to, I had to find out the real old-fashioned way. Oh, schoolyard? Boy, boy. Oh. <laughs> and porn tapes. Playboy okay. slash porn tapes. Oh, man. <laughs> it was called Tit for Tat. <laughs> and when I saw oh, a P going in, into a V for the first time, it mm -hmm. was like the biggest light bulb going off <laughs> in a person's head. And that's how I find, found out. But anyway, we're getting way off we're, course We're here. rambling here. Uh, this film... Uh, Here's the thing about this film, Mike. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Look, it, it, it's for kids. Mm -hmm. So you sit down and, and you watch it and you think to yourself, okay, they're going to do a birds and the bees type of situation mm -hmm. where they kind of halfway explain what the deal is 
and kind of give you a vague idea. No, no. This movie pulls no punches. This part of the body has a lot of different names. You probably have a special name for yours, but the right name for it is the penis. Just like peanuts, without the T. They get into it, they get deep into it. The man's penis becomes stiff and hard, and much bigger than it usually is. It gets bigger because it has a lot of work to do. It, I mean, almost the very beginning is, is them saying, uh, put your mom and dad in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. Notice the differences. <laughs> and then they're just like, bam, here's the differences. Mom's got these bumps on the top of her body. Those are called breasts. You will have heard all sorts of names for these. But the proper name is breasts. And that's the name you should try to remember. And then look down below, and then dad's got a thing down there. That's different than mom's, right? It's called a penis. I mean, you know? the, the, there's, there's nudity in the film. It's a cartoon, obviously, yeah. but you see everything. Yeah. You see it all. You'll see that both the man and the woman have patches of furry hair. You'll have some, too, one day when you get older. This is a lot of information for a kid but the mm -hmm. but the way that they do it the way that they present it i think is very well done there were some fun animated sequences oh, like yeah. there was that there was a there was a whole thing with a with a sperm and he's got a top hat and he's racing but if one single sperm meets one single egg they have a romance of their own and then they do, and it's kind of like weird and funny at the same time, and a baby appears. This is called fertilization. And the result of it is the beginning of a baby. To be honest, I think the movie, the, the film was a bit uh, front heavy, front loaded. Yeah. Because it gets into the pregnancy stuff too, <laughs> which is less fun to watch. Yeah. There lies the baby all curled up inside her mother. But how is she going to get out? The simple answer is, she's pushed out. Like, I, I don't need weird. an animated, like, pregnancy thing. Yeah. Like, ugh. I was just sort of struck by how uncomfortable the movie made me. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be uncomfortable with the, the basic facts of life. And that's when the man puts his penis inside the woman into her vagina. Uh, like I said, they don't pull any punches, so I mean, it is all just, you know, and then... All the rubbing up and down that's been going on ends in a lovely explosion. Like a tremendous big shiver for both of them. <sighs> it's intense. It's... But I will agree with you that it does get in some stuff that's sort of like, ooh, okay, and it's yeah. not stuff that is as fun as some of no. the stuff that's I imagine the, the kids are waiting by that point, too. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's way more informative. Right. It's less like, this is what this is called, notice this, into like, in the third trimester, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's a little less into the metaphors and like, stuff like that. Like, they liken having sex to like, skipping rope at some point. Because it's very tiring. More than running, or skipping, or climbing trees, or playing football, or almost anything. Which is interesting and kind of funny, there's a dog in it or whatever, but at a certain point it's just like drawings of a baby, and like a fetus and a uterus. Oh, why does the kid punch the dog? Oh, we we never found out. It just there's at some a, point there's a dog and the kid. Does a kid punch him or like strangle him? Strangle he hurts him. the dog for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you did you uh, at all get like you know even like five percent turned on by anything going on in the movie? No. No. Just. Okay. Did you? Paul, all right, let me ask another question then. Why don't we talk about a little something we call director's cut? 
director's cut. What's that? That's where I give you a director, and you tell me what this movie would be like if they had directed it. Oh, I see. So if you know, it gets a little bit of the Hollywood treatment. Mm -hmm. I understand. I see where you're mm -hmm. where you're coming from with this. I am going to go with uh, Christopher Guest. Okay. Uh, who has directed several films, uh, Waiting for Guffman. Um, Best in Show. Best in Show. Mighty Wind. Uh, Mighty Wind. Thank you. That's what I was trying to remember. Uh, and, you know, I think he would give... I think he would keep the fun vibe with this film. Mm -hmm. You get uh, Fred... Willard. Fred Willard. You get Fred Willard in there as the dad. Just sort of, you know, like humping in a bed. Oh, man. You maybe get... Uh, uh, Catherine O'Hara. Uh, Catherine O'Hara in there as the mom. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you just just give it a fun, you know, uh, uh, live action mm. sort of treatment. Update the sets a little bit, and I think he'd do a really good job with it. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How about you for a director's cut? What do you think? I'm going to pick Terry Gilliam. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Famed animator of many Monty Python cartoons. And but, animation sequences. Okay, things would get weird. Yes, they would. <laughs> I think it would be more of a silly sort of thing but mm. the, if he was the one doing it. Uh, Lighthearted, I bet. If he was genuinely taxed with the job of making this, it would probably be a little more slapsticky. It'd be all like cutouts, you know, like he does. And they'd animate, the top of the head would move a little bit. It would get really, probably all too in depth. You know, like. <laughs> like you'd travel up into the uterus and like there'd be like people in there talking and explaining things yeah. it would be it'd be weird and I bet you it would be a cult classic and probably about two and a half hours long <laughs> possibly yeah yeah well mike we learned a lot Yes, we did. From Where Did I Come From? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you guys are curious about uh, the birds and the bees and kind of how things work, or if you got a kid who's interested, this is a very, very informative film that really, um, you, you know, teaches kids what's up in a very fun uh, and uh, informative way. Uh, so check out Where Did I Come From, Mike. What are you thinking in terms of ratings here? No idea. I don't think I could even give a clever rating now. Uh, it's okay. Just let it happen. It's it's only natural to just for these things to happen. I don't even know. I give it. I give it two two hands held together. Oh, come together in a. In a very gripping moment, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, Mike, I thought uh, there was a lot of great stuff in the film. We talked about how it did slow down a little bit with some mm -hmm. of the pregnancy stuff. Not that pregnancy isn't important, but it's just like sort of, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five fingers, mm -hmm. and then over here, I'm only gonna go with 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 one finger. So you're you're rating. Half half of the movie is this part, right? Like that's five. the first part, right? And then the the last part yeah. is this one, just one, yeah, just one. So and now you're just showing how they connected, like it's the same movie, so you're it's the same, it. yeah, it's yeah. the same. I mean, it's both my hands. All right, great. Well, let's cut away from that, and uh, you know, well, it's good. Hey, Look, no, no, Paul, Paul, we gotta, we have to say goodbye now. Oh, okay, Paul. No, we have to. Okay. Okay. No, Paul. I mean, I'm just give me your hand. Well, thank you guys for watching this episode of our show. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. As always, he's Paul Brooks. He's my case. And thank you for watching us at B Movie Mania!